and their tongue is Dovahkiin, Dragon Lord. Fusrug Tog! Welcome to Method to the Meatness. I'm Burley Mullins, and if you've seen the intro or looked at the uh, thumbnail or looked at the title of this video, you'll know that today, at last, we are making mead. Now, I decided for the first mead that we're going to do one from Skyrim, and instead of doing uh, the super well-known ones like Blackbriar, Hunting Brew, or Nord Mead, uh, that I would do one a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, I decided to do Dragon's Breath Mead, which is a one-off mead from a side quest that you get from this lady named Olda to take her husband's uh, booze stash, and specifically his favorite, which is Dragon's Breath Mead, and uh, return it to her. You can pickpocket later, um, but if you drink it before you complete the quest, uh, it does not respawn, and it is the only mead in the game that does not. I'm gonna go ahead and start with, uh, I have some water, uh, just over 100 degrees. I'm just gonna go ahead and start getting my yeast awakened. Uh, and I'm using a, uh, a wine yeast, uh, specifically a sauterne yeast, um, just for... I thought the, uh, flavor components that the yeast brings to the party for this one uh, would go well with what I have in mind, uh, and we'll get more into that later. Let me just go ahead and put this in the warm water and let it bloom. It was decisions time. There was no description for Dragon's Breath Meat. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's not like a hunting brew where you can go in, see the meadery, and see, uh, what's in the surrounding area, what's in the meadery, to get some idea of what's going on. Um, we just have uh, the name, Dragon's Breath, and that it, like all alcohol in the game, increases stamina. Now, I went ahead and decided to look at what ingredients cause uh, stamina regen. Um, most of them are either uh, fictional or inedible, um, but two that stuck out to me were Honeycomb and Honey, which this is a mead if that makes sense and uh, purple mountain flowers. Now going off of that, I decided to pick up some purple star thistle honey. I've never worked with it before, so I only got two pounds. I do need a little bit more than this for the gallon of meat that I'm making. Um, but because I've never worked with it, I've never tasted it, I was hesitant to get a full batch's worth of this. Um, which, in retrospect, having tasted it now, was a mistake. This is delicious. Up front, you get the very familiar warm hug of honey. Uh, if you've had clover honey, it is the standard honey flavor. And it's followed up by this zingy, uh, almost tangerine, citrusy, apricot sort of um, flavor that comes in afterwards. It's delicious. Uh, I'm almost sad that all of this is going into the mead. Uh, I would very much like to use it for other things. Um, eating, mostly. <laughs> I had gone through a couple of iterations on uh, things that I could add for the name, Dragon's Breath. Um, in the past, I have used chili peppers and mead and made spicy meads. Um, but I wanted to do something that I haven't yet done in a mead for this and I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle uh, once I tasted this honey to complement this delicious, delicate flavor. Um, the other honey that I have, by the way, is orange blossom honey, which I knew from experience. I've used this many times. It makes wonderful mead. I can't recommend it enough. Um, if you don't use clover, use orange blossom. Uh, don't use wildflower honey. I'll get into that in another video, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is use black pepper for a uh, floral um, and mild heat to add to this. Uh, you know, Dragon's Breath mead was listed as this man's favorite mead, and I wanted this to be something approachable, delicate, and delicious. 
first, I'm going to add a little bit of spring water. Uh, you don't want to use distilled water, only because you want some of those minerals. You want you want some flavor in the water. You want uh, if I could get a reliable filter here, I would um, use water from my tap. It's actually really good water, um, but um, I don't want to risk contamination with, from uh, other microbes besides the yeast. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to the bottom uh, just to get the honey mixed in. Um, it's a little hard to get it off of the surface if you pour the honey first. I'm going to go ahead and gonna take a while. I'll probably skip past this or speed through it. Um, but I'm adding two pounds of this, or as close to it as I can get. They put a best buy date on this. Honey doesn't go bad. Like, as long as you keep moisture out of this, this will be good for tens of thousands of years. Well, the plastic might degrade into the honey. But otherwise, honey doesn't go bad. It has a naturally high sugar content, and when it comes into contaminants, it actually produces a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, honey is very sanitary. Uh, and it's when you dilute it, like we do for making mead, that you can run into some trouble. going for a total amount of honey, a little bit over two and a half pounds. I want this to be a little sweet. I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want it to be cloying and I don't want it to be very dry. This is somebody's favorite mead. Obviously, this person may like dry meads, but let's make it approachable. For something this small, I'm just gonna shake it. Oh, I've already sanitized this. I've used my 
my Santa clean, and I have a bowl right here full of sanitizing fluid. This has already been sanitized, this bowl has already been sanitized. Cleanliness is godliness for this process. You do not want another microbe getting in there. Even if you have a very competitive yeast, like a champagne yeast that will you know, elbow out other microbes, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure in this case. Bottom, but more and more is dissolving in. And you really want all this honey fully dissolved in. If you leave any at high concentrations in anyone's body, it can kill your yeast. And yes, I know honey is the yeast's food, but in this case, there really is too much of a good thing. I'm gonna add a little bit more water, get it up to the one gallon mark. I see this well. Smells amazing. Mm. That's probably more than a gallon. I'm gonna close this off and stir it up a little bit more because we want. This fully incorporated. Now that that's all mixed in, our gallon of meat is set up. We're moving on to our black pepper. What we want is about a teaspoon and a half black pepper. I know that doesn't sound like a lot for a full gallon, but it's going to be sitting here for the entire duration of the primary fermentation. Um, and a little goes a long way. I know from experience that a single uh, ancho chili pepper, if you decide to go that route, is more than enough for a full gallon of bead, even if it's only in there for the primary fermentation. Uh, what I want to do with these is lightly crack them open with this mortar and pestle. So, we just want the peppercorns opened. Uh, too much surface area and they'll get through our uh, little sachet that we have to contain them. And uh, it'll be harder to get them out when we go to rack this into secondary fermentation. That'll be in another video. Once you get them cracked open with a mortar and pestle, it's time to get their uh, sachet to contain them. There we go. Expect to see these in meats going forward. And I haven't sanitized any of this because I'm just going to sanitize the entire sachet of uh, peppercorns once they go in, and then they'll be ready for the mead right afterwards. I'm just agitating the yeast over here in this water that's barely over 100 degrees. You can kill the yeast if you have the uh, water too hot. I wouldn't go over 110. We just want it to be nice and comfortable. I had it just over 100. And hopefully that foams up a little bit more by the time we're ready to put it in, which is fast approaching. So normally for something like this, you leave
retrieve this uh, in a retrievable fashion, but I'm just going to siphon around it when we move this into secondary, since it's staying in for the entire primary fermentation. So I'm just going to tie this off. But if you don't have one of these, I spent years just putting the stuff into the meat and just trying to siphon around it, and it was fine. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sanitize. Um, we want to bring no problem microbes to the party. I'm going to see if my uh, refractometer needs calibration. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the same water that I used. slightly off. But it is fully zeroed in. Now, I'm using a refractometer instead of a hydrometer to measure my gravity um, out of convenience. I don't want to have to deal with pouring out into a graduated cylinder and uh, having it sanitized so I can pour it back with a hydrometer. Um, but it does introduce some headaches down the line. Uh, once there's alcohol in this, um, you actually have to do quite a bit of math to correct your refractometry readings. Uh, the alcohol um, has a different refractive index than just water and sugars, which is what you're really measuring when you try and get alcohol uh, contents uh, with before and after readings. So I'm going to grab a sample. reading and the bricks reading in order to um, compensate for the alcohol later on. Uh, maybe I'll run you through the math, maybe I won't. <laughs> we'll see. And that gravity reading looks good. We should get a semi-sweet meat out of this. Um, should be very pleasant. And now I need to get the black pepper into this. step is to add the yeast, which is foaming up, looking happy, looking alive. I'm going to go ahead and add it in. Tighten this up. And add the airlock. There are two schools of thought into what you add into your airlock. Uh, you can add distilled water, or you can add vodka. I find that vodka kind of um, allows the alcohol to evaporate fast and can attract bugs, whereas I've never had a problem with just using plain distilled water in a regular airlock. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that now. Normally with a fermenter or a mead, I wouldn't add the water until I've moved it into its final location to ferment. Uh, but with a fermenter of this size, um, I can keep it pretty stable when I move it. Now that is everything you need to get the ferment fermentation underway. Once the fermentation gets really happily going, I will add um, my uh, yeast nutrient. Uh, the yeast cannot live on honey alone. It needs a source of nitrogen and some other nutrients in order to uh, keep it happy and healthy and uh, keep it from producing off flavors in your meads. Now that was part one of the Dragon's Breath Mead from Skyrim. I hope you join me later.
One more thing, I'm gonna remember this down the road eventually. Uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon, and please leave a comment of a mead from pop culture media, especially fantasy and sci-fi, but I will accept <laughs> any pop culture mead uh, that you want to see recreated here on Method of Meadness. Thank you very much. I wouldn't be able to do this without, uh, without people like you. decided to say hello and interrupt my shoot? Huh? Have you? <laughs>